Welcome back to the bush shed. The continuing rebuild or the repairs of the boat. And um, for this video, I had a pair of seats. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen my other videos, they will be popping up here somewhere. I think about here. All right, so make sure that you look at those and you'll understand what's going on. All right. So I bought these seats. Well, I bought the boat with these seats. And um, as you can see, they're not that great. So to get them reupholstered, it's around about three fifty, four hundred dollars each. So between three hundred and four hundred dollars each to get them reseated and or reupholstered. No, that's way too much money. So they're worth. They honestly are worth five hundred dollars each, uh, which is a pain in the backside. So I thought I'd go out and get myself a good second-hand pair. Um, and you know, I, I I thought I got myself a great set of seats. Now, that's the first one. Look at that. That's number one. Nice looking seat, isn't it? Seats to boat, blue and white. This is number two. Look at that. It is rotted. Rotted the buggery. Look at that. I'm serious. Seriously. This is the base plate that I sat on. And as you can see, uh, let's have a look at that. Oh, turn around. There we go. Completely rotted out. So I nearly sat on that. Well, actually, I did sit on that and I nearly went ass over the tip. Um, just collapsed on me completely. So the whole thing's rotted out right through, as you can see through there, to there. Now this, this side's solid. The back here is, well, sort of okay. It's not the greatest. There you go. These just fell off. So this video is going to be for not the installation of the seats, but this is the bush shed, right? We do woodworking, right? So why don't we pull this apart and see if we can fix it. I think that's a great idea. All right, guys. Wish me luck. Hopefully, it'll end up like that one. All right, guys, let's get into it. Now, first of all, I'm going to have to assess exactly how much damage or how much rot is in the bottom of this, um, this jet. And it looks like at the back here, It's not that bad actually all the way up there. So I could probably cut it through there. Okay, so about three inches, four inches up. So I can cut it there. This side here, it's not too bad at all, that one. But this one, wow, it's missing. Fair whack of it itself. <laughs> so what I need to do is actually cut as much of this foam out of here because it's literally the glue here and that's obvious so I need to hopefully get this foam up and away so that I can have a look at what I need to cut and what I need to reinforce by putting in the new piece and bracing it up um, I'm not too sure how I'm going to do that I might have an idea, and um, I'm hoping it's going to work. If it does, awesome. If it doesn't, bugger. Because, <laughs> to be honest with you, um, I really don't have the money to go out and buy another set of seats. So, I'm going to use the resources and the materials available to me here in the old bush shed and hope for the bloody best. All right? So like I said, keep your fingers crossed for me. Let's try and get that done, eh? Basically like skinning a rabbit. And if you're wondering how it's done, it's quite easy. So what we do, as you can see here, okay, it's stuck. 
All right, no glues there. So what we need to do is we need to just basically cut that. So we need to stay as close to the wood as possible. Okay, and there we go. See, and it moves it through. All right, so anyway, there's a little bit of glue cut right onto the wood, yeah, like that, and there it goes. And it pulls through. Okay, so literally. You're cutting as close to the wood as possible. So getting to close to something like that, and you're moving down like that. That's basically it. Hope I explain that well enough for you. All right. Let me skin this beast. Now, this one, excuse my bald head. Okay, this one's a little bit more difficult. That is because you can see two different colours here, pink and yellow. These pink ones weren't glued in, they were actually stapled in, that's a pain in the back side. Once the staples are pulled out, I can pull this right off and then I'll start skinning it even further down the back here. As you can see, it's all just falling apart, look at that. It's very, very, very disappointing, more pointy. Indeed. Can you imagine if we were sitting in the boat? We went over a wave. Thud! It was my son sitting in there or my partner sitting in there. Tell you what, she wouldn't have spoken to me for about a month. Whoa! So, I think it'd be best if I fixed the bloody thing. What do you reckon? <laughs> Anyone who's got a spouse that understand what I'm talking about. Alright, as you can see the extent of the rot, it's a pain in the backside, I know. Well there we go, I've got, uh, I've lifted up a lot of the foam now. Now I've got a mark down here which is around about 90 mil from here to here. Now that is that this part here is an angle. So when I measure from here, at that angle with my thing that is called a bevel, if I do, here it is, <laughs> my bevel. So that's the angle. So I need to measure to that, needs to measure up to there. Well, all I can do is cut it and hope for the best, to be honest. Now for something a little dangerous. I hate that. As you can see, that's not too bad. That's really, really good. But as you can see here, that's pretty ratchet still. That's a real noise, to be honest. So now I've got to try and figure out what I'm going to do. Now, I think, as I have painted it all the way up, I think what I will do, take this whole piece off of here. Take that whole piece off and just replace this whole piece. I think that's the best way to go. I really do. are stapled in these pink ones. So I'm going to pull those staples, this one will come off, then Bob your uncle, and just put a new piece in there. Bloody ripper, let's get it done. So stoked to pull that out. Went and had some lunch, come back and forgot that I had the camera still running. I'm getting old. But anyway, as you know we finally got that out. And I marked up a new piece. Look at that. Look at that. Right angles and all that kind of stuff. So I'm stoked with that. So now I can go to um, Bunnings and get myself a, um, some 10mm uh, ply. 
make myself uh, a sidearm. Now, what we need to do, cut me a piece of wood and uh, putting it in here now. So getting it all measured up and so forth. Now it's got to, as you can see, it's got to come down. That's not a great issue, as you can see. Um, so it's got to come down to approximately there, that angle there. So I've got a mark there, and I'm going to cut right through it so that I've got, basically at the end of the day, it's going to have a shelf on it, and this part of the wood is going to sit over here to support it. Let's see how we go with that, eh? Get it on the big saw, right? Eh? Can you see the big saw? Can't. There we go. All right, there we go. Okay, it's all cut. Now let's get it on there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it in. Get some uh, staples into it. Staple it down as well. That's going to hold that nice and tight. And of course I'm going to put a um, couple of screws in there. I'll be fine then. Yeah, let's see. Let's use the new compressor. Bloody ripple, look. Have a look at that. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Yeah, I'm a messy bugger, I know. Once the other piece goes on the other side here, I'll be doing exactly the same thing. Screwing from the side, screwing from the back. Inside there is going another piece of wood, which is going to be another piece of plywood. And that is where you sit your bum. So, you know what? I'm, I'm pretty confident that we're going to get this done. I think we are. So let's crack on. Oh, g'day guys. Yeah, I've changed clothes. It's the other day. Um, yeah, you know, got a little bit late the other night, didn't it, when we were doing this chair? Yeah. I know, I'm, I'm cleaning up. It's a bit of a worry. <laughs> but, hey, the old saying, I did say that in this new shop, I would uh, uh, do my best at cleaning up as much as I possibly can do so. So, bear with me. Lovely. What, your little trolley? Kmart. 20 bucks. Well, not too bad, hey? It's got a bit of a roll to it, it's got some wheels to it, things can fit in it, doesn't fit a lot, but it's not too bad actually, I can roll it around and uh, you know, put a few things in there and work with it to be honest. Alright, we've got our stencil, we've got some wood and unfortunately I had to go buy that. I wish I could say that I had that in my repertoire of uh, wood and uh, spare bits and pieces, but unfortunately I did not. It was 12 mil, and the wood that I have is um, 18 mil, which is, an, which is basically a metric inch, as they call it. Now, of course, 12 mil is, excuse me, 12 mil is equivalent to a one inch, uh, half inch, sorry. All right, let's cut it. A good way of um, cutting a straight line with a circular saw. There's a lot of people out there showing you how to do it and uh, I'll just give you a quick look at how it is done. Basically, you measure out, if you're using this side of the saw to cut from, or this side of the saw to cut from, if you're using this side of the saw to cut from, it's best off using screws or a very low profile um, uh, clamp of some sort, okay? <clears throat> this side, it's not too bad, you can measure out between here and the blade. So uh, that edge of the blade there to here. The same with this, you measure from there to the edge of the blade here. Okay, now I'm going to be cutting from this edge along here, okay? So if you can see, I'll put a piece of the straight edge there. You whack it up against there like that, and guess 
what? You just saw her away. Do an idea if I put a battery in there, wouldn't it? I could cut that out, but uh, you know, bugger it, I'm gonna leave it in there. <laughs> Bloody lovely, look at that. Right along the line, exactly how I wanted it. And make sure you don't cut into your table. Okay. I do that quite often. Like I just did. There we go, look at that. Lovely. It doesn't have to be tremendously exciting. As long as it works, that's all we care about. ready to go. Pretty stoked with that to be honest. Anyone who wants to do this they should be using marine ply. I understand that and I agree. But when you've got marine ply that is <laughs> uh, just for a small piece 500 by 500 is nearly $40 and you can't really afford it so you've got to go with what you know that you can afford. Now that's okay if you make sure that you treat this correctly before putting it into any marine environment. And I was told by a guy who does a lot of marine work, and if you're using it for um, internal of the vessel, so long as you uh, treat it correctly with, the, with lacquer or oil it, and you really soak the oil into it, it, sh it won't last as long as marine plywood, but it will give you good um, a good few years. So what I'm doing, I'm not going to oil it because I need to glue to it. So what I use is this stuff. British paints, water-based clear finish. I used this on a few boats and what I found using normal lacquers is the lacquer ends up flaking. How I figured it out by using this because I built myself a letterbox and I coated it with this stuff and still to the day, and that was five years ago, and to today, it still hasn't swollen up. The lacquer is still on it, hasn't peeled off of it. So I'm pretty much under the impression that using a water-based lacquer like this and you lather it on, you don't just bugger it around for a little bit on there. You lather it on and make sure you get into all the areas. I reckon it will probably outlast what's already in there. <laughs> That'd be orange, wouldn't it? Hey? So, like I said, you give it a good thick coat. You don't muck around. Especially with this, on any, any plywood, get right into the ends of it and you really really lather it into that into those ends that's where the water is going to get into yeah, it's not too bad not too bad at all i think we'll be right now i've got to make a 45 degree um, support bracket to go inside which is that there so I've got to, I'm not going to try to take this one out because as you can see it's rotted in there. I need to make a new one and I have a piece of wood that can do that. Let's get it done. Lovely, look at that. It is a bit hard for me to use this because this is a beautiful piece of camphor laurel. But it's been sitting there for quite some time. And it's not getting used, so bugger it. Might as well use it for something that's going to be worth the effort. And you know it's camphor laurel, because when you cut it or sand it, it smells like Vicks vapor rub. Yeah. <laughs>
Lovely job, Lise. Yeah. All right. Let's try that. Get the cherry. Let's see if it'll fit, eh? Can't see any reason why it wouldn't fit, but <laughs> but you never know. All right. Here we go. Tell you what, by crikey, I'm happy with that. On, want to seal things as well, believe it or not, good old uh, PVA glue does the job <laughs> quite well. Takes longer to dry though. <laughs> Complete the installation, so to speak. You've got to love it when a plan comes together. They said that in a movie at one, at one time. Actually, it was a TV show, if I remember rightly. <laughs> Bloody little ripper. Look at that. We have a chair. Look at that. Solid as a bloody rock. Yep. I'm happy with that. What we will do is we will measure it out a bit. 47. Let's see if we can go 49. So I can fit my fat ass in there. What I'm going to need to do now is cut a piece of wood that's going to fit in there. Why am I not making it out of the six mil? Because I want the seat to be a lot more sturdier than it was originally. Happy with that. I guess it's time to do the routing around the edges of that now. Now the reason I'm doing it in the thicker one, because like I said, I want a little bit of beef on the bottom. It gives me more to screw into. Let's get it glued up, eh? And get it in before the evening. Why, Ben, are you putting in staples like you said you didn't, weren't going to? Well, exactly, that's what I said. I need to put it in there to stabilise it before I can put the screws in, don't I? Wolf heads! Sometimes, guys, really? <laughs> Seats in! God, I'm excited! Yes, very excited. It's nearly finished. The completion of this bloody thing. wrong with that I'm so bloody stoked with that all right let's get it all glued together before we go to bed good old spray adhesive a little bit of info on spray adhesive so that you understand it correctly you need to let it sit for at least five or so minutes and let it dry a little bit before you attach it. Main reason being is it's better adhesive if you do so. All right. Basically, that's what it is. Contact adhesive. It, it contacts and adheres. Lovely. Welcome back. Welcome back. Your dreams are your ticket out. You remember that song? Welcome back, Carter. Come back, going back a few years, isn't it? <laughs> well, there you go, look at that. The seat is nearly done. Oh, turn it around so you can have a good look. You didn't see that, did you? The seat is nearly done. <laughs> look at that. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I've just got to finish gluing down the sides and then of course we can put the sleeve on. Now, I know I'm going to have problems with this sleeve. Uh, not because it's too small for 
what I've done because as you know I've pretty much basically oh no seriously I've done it virtually the same as the other one so the issue is that it's been sitting for a week now and of course originally it was sitting like the other chair around its foam and so forth so it was always stretched and when I took it off it came off very loose uh, very easily so that just goes to show that it was stretched over there quite nicely and you know you've been sitting in it moving in around it so it stretches there so I can guarantee this has gotten thinner because it's gotten cooler so as you know cool contract heat expand mm. unfortunately I know I'm gonna have a problem with that so I've got to get my heat gun out heat it all up and hopefully I can put it on there I was going to put it out in the Sun today but yeah it's raining it's not gonna work today I don't think this sun so <laughs> pain in the art because that would have been fantastic to heat that right up and to be able to stretch it and put it on again but anyway never mind we we will prevail yes we will well let's glue this last bit down last bit of the puzzle going into place there you go look at that Brand new sleeve, ripper. You can see it's slightly wider for my big fat ass. We call it an ass down here. I know I keep telling you that, guys in bloody America and all that kind of stuff. It's not ass, no ass. Sounds like seriously. <laughs> How do you get it with ass? Really, it's like aluminium, not aluminium. Dude, seriously. <sighs> Alright, that's done. Now, I think I have had this heat gun for a good 25, if not longer, years. And it still works. Get some heat onto it first before I put it on. So I can kind of give it a bit of a stretch. It's like, like me getting fat. And you know, Wearing a shirt that was you bought when you were two sizes smaller and you put it on, it's kind of like, you know, body hugging. And you don't really want that to be body hugging, especially when you've got a shape like mine. Anyway, you don't want that to happen. So what you do is you get in there with your hands, and you push like that, push like that, and there you go, fits now. So, you didn't want to see my belly, did you? But you got it. But you did. Nah, nah. <laughs> Get it really, 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 really heated up. That way, we can give it a small stretch over before I put it on, and hope that that will assist greatly in the installation of this. So. Have a bit of a stretch. All right. See what happens, eh? See if we can get this on here. Now I'm not an upholsterer, but hey, we're giving it a good go. We'll bring this one over and have a look at how this one looks compared to this. Here we go. Let's try. <laughs> This is going to be fun. I'm guessing a lot of heat is going to assist me here. I don't know what I'm doing, so hey, I'm just winging it. <laughs> That's warm. It's a little bit too hot, I think. There you go, look at that. Seems all right, mate. Let's hope it works. All I can say is these upholsterers can keep the job. <laughs> what do you reckon? Really? There you go. You've got
got to be happy with that, don't you, hey? All right, let's get the centerpiece in. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, mums and dads, nans and pops. We have just reposted a seat. <clears throat> G'day guys. As you know, I'm so bloody stoked about that uh, chair being fixed. Oh, I'm absolutely stoked about it. Can't believe how well it went and um, how well it turned out. So, I've got the both of them together and you tell me which one I repaired. You ready? Here we go. You know? You know? Should I tell you? Yeah, all right, I'll tell you. <laughs> Was it this one? Or this one? Alright, which one was it? The first one I hit? Or the second one I hit? Please tell me, come on. Tick tock, tick tock. No, nah, you're wrong. It was the second one I hit. Yes, it was. <laughs> you can't tell the bloody difference, can you? It's so bloody awesome. Oh, I'm stoked. Trust me, I'm stoked with this. All right, I'm going to jump in the seat and show you how sturdy it is. And then I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown of what I did. All right. Look at that. Works a bloody treat. And I'm 120 kilo, guys. Look at the size of me. Hey. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. Lovely. Awesome. So, how did I fix it? Well, let's use this one as a model. Okay. I cut a four inch step into it and I butt jointed it against where I'd cut, glued, stapled, screwed all the way down the side, all the way down the side there. Got the right hand side of course as you know, this whole piece of wood in here, completely replaced it, okay, completely and totally replaced. Alright, look I know I'm fat, leave me alone, completely <laughs> and totally replaced and um, screwed all the way down there screwed all the way along in there as well okay so then of course i replaced the bottom okay and i'll show you that on this one so you can see it right so there we go so you know now that is the right one so this is completely replaced as you know I used a one inch or metric one inch, which is 19 mil piece of plywood here. Okay. And on the right hand side, I used the standard 12, 12 mil here. Okay. Which is quarter inch or half inch, sorry, of plywood there. After I'd done all that, put it all together and so forth, I screwed on the good side, which is this side here, put screws in there, right screw into the one inch piece of timber here screws right through here into this one inch piece of timber and at the back screws right through into this one inch piece of timber as well and then of course what did we do is we lay the sleeve back over the heating gun made a bloody big difference unfortunately you know because i did make it slightly wider for my big fat ass all right so um at the end of the day i'm going to a haberdashery shop and i'm going to buy some material tape basically it's it's you put it over that so it doesn't look so unpretty so to speak it looks a bit more professional and then we need to put those on i really don't need to show you that i'm going to put these on i really don't do i um it's pretty straightforward find the center here four bolts actually nuts and bolts stainless steel they go through from here all the way through into here done so i'm not going to show you how that is put on it's because it's pretty straightforward guys anyone can do this even my daughter <laughs> the good thing though is yes this was wider and as you saw when i was putting it together but this fits in there beautifully because this one is quite tight you see now you could probably tell now there is a slight difference in, in size width 
Okay, so admittedly, I can sit in this. That's not an issue, but it's a bit tight here. I just slide straight in, bloody ripper. Photos coming up after this, and uh, you'll see the photos of it in these in the boat. I'll try and take photos of befores and after. Okay, I've got one photo of it before, so I'd actually thrown it away. I go, I can do this, I'm not gonna do this. And I'm glad I didn't, to be honest. I'm really glad I didn't. Um, I could literally resell this chair now for nearly $300, just this one chair. So I could get 600 bucks for the two of these chairs. It's really good, actually. <laughs> but anyway, all right, guys, as I always say, hooroo. And of course, don't forget, if I can do it, bloody hell, you can do it. I, I never thought I could do this. I am so stoked with myself because I did. All right, guys, I honestly thought I was going to throw it away. And rebuilding it and making it stronger than what it was, uh, I'm absolutely over the moon. Isn't it great?